Good day everyone. I'm Michael. And I'm using a text-to-speech program to have a more clear speech and audio. In this video lesson, you will learn the following. 1. Create a Xamarin Forms relative layout in code behind. 2. Position and overlap elements. 3. Apply constraints based on another element. 4. Recognize the difference between creating relative layout in XAML versus in code behind. Now, let's open our Visual Studio and do some coding. Let's comment out this markup. Then go to the code behind of the page. Now let's create a new instance of the relative layout. Let's also create a new instance of box view, which is the maroon box view and the gray box view. Then we can now add these box views to our relative layout. So relative layout dot children dot add. Let's add first our maroon box view. Then we can set its constraint value. To make the code more readable, we can use named argument in C sharp. Named arguments are used to associate the argument name of a method with its value. First is width constraint. Then here we need to call the constraint object. Here we have few options we can access in this class. We can choose constant if we want to pass an absolute value. You can also select equal, relative to parent, etc. We want the width of this box view to be the same as the width of its parent. So we select relative to parent method. Now if you look at the IntelliSense. This method gets a func of related layout and returns a double. Func is a built-in generic delegate type. Func can be used with a method, an anonymous method, or a lambda expression. We can use a lambda expression here that takes a relative layout object and return a value with a type of double. Let's give our object a name, parent. Then goes to. We want the maroon box width to be the same as its parent width. So we input the parent, which is the relative layout. Then the properties we would like to return. And that is width. Now let's set its height constraint. In this line of code, we multiply the height of its parent to point 33. Since we want the maroon box view to occupy one third of its parent height, our maroon box view are now set. We can now add the gray box view. Here we set the width of the gray box view to be the same as its parent width. Next is we need to set the height of the gray box view to 50 units. Since we want its height to be absolute, we can just pass an absolute value to a constant method. Here we set its height constraint with a constant value of 50. 
Next is to keep its distance from maroon box view of 50 units. So why constraint? Then constraint. Since we want to relate this element to another element, we will be using the relate to view method. Now, which view? The maroon box view. This method requires two arguments. First is the view or the element. Second is a func. Which means we should write an inline function. That takes two arguments. A relative layout and a view. And returns a double. Again, a lambda expression. First is relative layout. And the second one is the target view. In this case, the maroon box view. Let's give it a name target view. Then this goes to target view dot height plus 25. In this line of code, we set its Y constraint or the position of the gray box view from the top. By setting its type to relative to view and get the height of maroon box view then add 25 units to it. This will keep the position of gray box view 25 units below to maroon box view. Last is to assign this layout to content. Let's run the app. There you have it. That's how we create relative layout in code behind. That's all for this video lesson. If you have questions, suggestions, something to add, or you think something is missing or incorrect to the lesson, please let me know. Again, this is Michael, thank you and see you at my next video lesson. Keep safe everyone.